So we continue with our discussion uh, on con convective heat transfer. But before I go into the discussion of uh, the flat plate geometry uh, flow and heat transfer over a flat plate geometry, I would like to make the corrections or the insertion because I was not able to write the expression uh, you know, uh, for the flux uh, in the context of uh, transient heat conduction in the semi-infinite geometry. So there was a very simple, I almost wrote it, but I think uh, I was not having it. Uh, so the instantaneous uh, heat flux Q, uh, which is at y is equal to 0, please refer to the last class's notes. Okay? So this represents uh, the one boundary of the semi-infinite geometry. And then I said that you have to, which is equal to minus, which all know, okay? and that we need to evaluate. And this in order to get this, you have to find out that how to differentiate the T temperature profile, which is an error function solution. So that's what I said. And this, I had indicated that this should come out to be T1. If you do the differentiation, okay, and this K comes there, and that the final expression becomes this pi, and then we have alpha, and then we have T. So that is the expression of the heat flux. And I also say that if you take this and you do a time integral, okay, time averaging, then the average heat flux at y is equal to 0 will come out to be T1 minus T0, and this is going to be 2, and this is going to be thermal conductivity, and this is going to be pi alpha to T sub E, in which T sub E represents the exposure time or the total length of uh, the exposure from T is equal to 0 to the time. So therefore, you can say that if the instantaneous heat flux expression, if you substitute T is equal to T e, then basically and you multiply it by a factor of 2, then you get the time averaged uh, heat flux between the time 0 to T e, and that is why I wrote yesterday that Q bar is equal to 2 times Q. So having said that, we now move on to our discussion on the flat plate geometry, and let me remind you that what we were, we were considering flow and heat transfer over a flat plate. Let us get into the details of the problem in order to understand uh, the fundamentals of convective heat transfer. So the flow approaches the flat plate and this is x is equal to 0 in which x represents the streamwise direction where L capital L represents the plate length and y represents uh, the transverse direction. Okay? So the coordinate system is something like this. And the velocity here is u, and the velocity here is v. That means along the y component, the velocity. So the fluid is approaching this hot plat flat plate, which is maintained at a constant temperature of T sub s. How we maintain the constant temperature? That's a different source. We may be having a finite energy source below the plate that helps us to maintain. Uh, the plate at a constant temperature. Now, let us say that the fluid is approaching with a velocity which you call the free infinite, free stream velocity and a free stream temperature of u infinity and t infinity. Before we proceed further, of course, I have already introduced to you, you know that over the flat plate, we, I have, dis, I have told you that we have a velocity boundary layer when I was discussing. Uh, the fluid dynamics uh, fundamentals. In this case, because we have heat transfer as well as flow, therefore, over the flat plate, we are going to see a thermal as well as velocity boundary layer, both. Now, let us say, let us look at uh, a vertical plate to explain that what is the thermal boundary layer here, basically. So, if you have this is a temperature and this is a distance, And then what we see that the velocity goes from T sub S, which is the surface temperature, and then it goes down and the velocity approaches something like this, and where this is the T infinity. So this you can consider that I have con you know, taken any point X, and at this particular point, I am drawing temperature variation as a function. So what is this plot? This plot is basically T as a function of y 
at a fixed x value. That is what is this. So, we can imagine it is going to be high temperature at the surface and then ours is T s is greater than. Otherwise, it would be gas or the fluid hitting the flat plate. We are not considering that here. The solid is losing heat to the ambient. So, there is basically temperature in the fluid phase which is the function of x and y. It is a two dimensional problem. The direction perpendicular to the board is infinite. So, therefore, that is what. Now, the thickness of the boundary layer basically is defined by the term. Suppose, at this point, I say that the temperature, <coughs> excuse me, is T star. Then, if T s minus T star divided by T s minus T infinity is almost 0 0.99, then we will say that this distance from the surface of the flat plate will represent what is known as the thermal boundary layer, delta sub t. So, this is similarly for velocity boundary layer, we will have V at the surface minus V for, you know at the edge of the boundary layer divided by the differential velocity field that will determine that around adjacent to the solid what is the thickness. And this thickness of the thermal boundary layer you can understand is going to be a function of the intensity of the flow. If the flow intensity is very large, in that case the boundary layer is going to be steeper here. Okay? The thickness of the boundary layer will shrink, flow is weak, in that case the thickness of the boundary layer is going. So, there are two such boundary layers in the problem. One is a velocity boundary layer for example, I will, and the other is I have delivered, I will explain why I have drawn it differently, another is suppose that is the boundary layer. Okay? So, by we have we have a boundary layer thickness at this location exactly because I am drawing this temperature profile at fixed x. So, at this x I will have a temperature profile, at this x I will have a temperature profile, at this x I will have a temperature profile and these temperature profiles are basically going to be going something like this okay? in which. So, at every x, so I have connected this particular point is that point 0.99 condition is satisfied here. So, this I have marked as the edge of the boundary layer. So, every point, every x I have and when I join all those points, I get the boundary layer. So, suppose this is the velocity boundary layer as I have indicated to you suppose and the red one is the thermal boundary layer. And how I have constructed the thermal boundary layer that I have just now explained. Now, there are two cases we have which we have to consider here that suppose the job is to predict that given this surface temperature, I want to find out that how is temperature within the fluid phase bounded by the geometry. What is that geometry? That geometry, the four field of interest is this. Either you can say it is infinity or one can say it is delta sub t. Beyond the thermal boundary layer, I have no intention to do the calculation because I know beyond the boundary layer, it is going to be the free stream velocity and the free stream temperature. So, outside the velocity boundary layer, the velocity is going to be u infinity. Outside the thermal boundary layer, the velocity is going to be, uh, temperature is going to be t infinity. Okay? So, that is the domain of my interest. So, I want to find out that what is the temperature at different point in the flow domain, that is what is the task. This is my task 1. And if I want, get me the value of this. The phenomena we are dealing is a steady state constant property phenomena and it is a two dimensional phenomena as I have this indicated. In order to do that, I have to, as I have indicated, solve the fluid flow and the heat transfer equation simultaneously because this is a convective flow problem and yesterday I have shown you that the total flux now is no more the diffusion flux alone, it is diffusion plus convection and that convection estimation of the convection heat flux necessitates that I should have the prescription of the flow field in that domain. So, I will have a con overall continuity I will have x direction momentum balance 
wide reaction momentum balance and thermal energy conservation equation. We should be able to write these equations without, because it is a Cartesian coordinate problem, so it is a very straightforward case. I want to write these equations because I will do certain simplifications which is going to be important. So, I will level it here so that I do not have to write A, B, C and D. And let me write that what are those equations A, B and C and D. If it is constant property, then we have, I have written u is the x component of the flow and y is the, so. So, this is my overall equation of continuity. We have first order derivative here all and then we can say that <coughs> this is going to be equal to u u. So, you have divided by rho all through. So, I will write kinematic viscosity and this is equal to C, we can write that <coughs> the same way. Now, we will write u v then we will write the second derivative which is v v and then we have minus 1 by rho del p del y kinematic viscosity and now it is the derivative of and then d we have <coughs> again if we take uh, uh, specific heat as well as or heat capacity as well as density and thermal conductivity are constant as per our uh, assumption. So, we have the first is So, these are the four equations that I am talking about. So, if the task one, if I want to calculate the temperature field within the domain of interest, in that case I have to solve. I am talking of a you know uh, calculation framework. We can of course determine experimentally also, you know, what is the flow pattern of, or magnitude of the flow. There are flow measuring devices, but we are not talking about it. So, we are considering a framework and that framework necessarily embodies four different equation which I have written in the context of a 2D, two dimensional flow over a flat plate geometry. Now, if you consider that this two dimensional along the y direction you have is the gravity direction is there, then you can of course add <coughs> where g sub y essentially represents minus 9.81 because the y axis is this way and the gravity is in the opposite direction. So, I have to calculate the flow use the flow here information and then this becomes one equation one unknown and I can solve this equation to get the temperature field. Once I get the temperature field, I should be able to draw at any point, you know, how does the temperature is changing. So, I can get the value of the temperature and at, the, at a given x, which is this particular point, okay, I should be able to from the solution. So, this is the given x and at this x, I should be able to find out that what is the temperature profile. Okay? So, the solution will gives me everywhere the temperature profile is known once I solve this equation by knowing the velocity field and therefore, I should be able to establish this particular line. There is absolutely no ambiguity in that. I have not talked about the boundary conditions with regard to these equations, but we must understand that at x is equal to 0, I have the temperature and the velocity known. At y is equal to 0 for all values of x, I know the surface temperature here okay? and 
I also know that the velocity is a stagnant plate, so the velocity is going to be 0 again outside the boundary layer or far away from the influence of the solid plate. I also know the condition which are the free stream boundary condition and again I will show you that along the x direction at x is equal to L no boundary conditions are going to be needed because I have introduced to you if you remember that the parabolic flow assumption applies here. That means the flow and heat transfer along the x direction is the convective comp component is much larger than the corresponding diffusive components. So, that will allow us we will require no conditions at x is equal to L. So, you will require y is equal to 0, y is equal to infinity, x is equal to 0 and all these conditions are known. So, the boundary conditions are known. So, we can establish the temperature field, we can draw this line and then establish the temperature field. Now, task 2, if I want to have that somebody tells me that look, I want to know that what is the flux of heat from this surface, because this is the hot surface, heat is going to the amine. So, now at what rate the fluid is actually taking away heat, I want to find out that what is the heat flux value. Now, you can say sir, I can you know do the same exercise which I have done for task 1. Then once I have established these temperatures profiles okay, at different locations, all this temperature profile having established. Now, what I am going to do? I am going to find out the slope at each line and that slope is a measure of what? That slope is essentially that is what is it takes. Okay? This is the tangent at x is equal to y is equal to 0. These are white lines at the tangent set. And so, by drawing these tangents, by determining their slope, I should be able to find out this. And then, if I multiply it with minus k, then what I have got? I have gotten the value of flux at the surface. So, I will call it a surface heat flux at different values of x. And that I say, I have got a local heat flux values. So, having predicted the temperature by using this formalism, then subsequently drawing the tangents, I have been able to establish that what is the heat flux, local heat flux and then I can have an integration. So, I can say that the total plate average just like the way I have done time averaging. So, I will do in the previous problem if you remember when I was saying from local heat flux to the average time average heat flux and now I am not time averaging because this is a steady problem. This is a we have got a local heat flux and I want to find out that what is the plate average heat flux or length average heat flux and that is basically 0 to L Q x. And note that Q x is a function of x because at each point the slope is different. So, the flux is a function of x. Once I know this functional form, I would be able to integrate and then I will be able to find out. So, the task is fairly complex that I want to have one single prescription. That is, I wanted to have a knowledge of at what rate the plate is giving away heat to the surrounding and look the task what I have to do. I have to establish the equations, establish the boundary condition, maybe write a computer program and then solve this equation. Okay? Now, alternatively one can also say that look the heat flux by definition is equal to this in which the delta t basically is T s minus T infinity. Again the heat transfer because the flux is a function of distance. So, therefore, h is also going to be a function of distance at different x. So, h we will call it the h here is a local heat transfer coefficient. Similarly, we will have a plate average heat transfer coefficient. So, the flux can be found out if somebody gives tells me that I give you you know a prescription from which you should be able to calculate the heat transfer coefficient, then it becomes very simple. I do not have to solve these equations and I do not have to really bother about their solutions and then uh, I can directly use uh, you know the knowledge which is available on the heat transfer coefficient and then use this heat transfer coefficient to calculate. So, the whole task of calculating flux between a solid and a fluid boils down therefore to the estimation of H. And there has been considerable amount of work done by thermal engineers who have devised correlations based on which 
from which h can be calculated and once we substitute the h for case specific scenario that I am going to come in, in a minute, uh, we should be able to calculate the flux without having to go for each and every problem that establish the fluid flow equation, establish the heat transfer coefficient, solve them, determine the curves, draw the tangents, determine the flux. No, we need not do this for every problem. Once we understand the you know, configuration of the problem, we should be able to pick up a formulae which is available in the textbooks and many of you may be knowing this, when I will discuss it will be clear to you, which will allow, our to, allow us to directly estimate H for that particular scenario and having substituted H okay, into this expression, we should be able to calculate heat flux uh, very easily and which will make our life also simple. Now, <coughs> at this point, I will come back to this here, but before I have to say a few things about these equations and the boundary layer. The way I have drawn in this particular case, as you have seen that the thermal boundary layer is bigger than the uh, uh, velocity boundary layer. Now, this is there is a very important parameter which we call as the Prandtl number. And which is equal to the kinematic viscosity divided by the thermal diffusivity, momentum diffusivity to heat diffusivity. The relative thickness of the boundary layer is determined by the Prandtl number of the fluid. If the Prandtl number is equal to 1, these boundary layers are going to be more or less similar. Okay? The diffusion which essentially tells us that heat and fluid, they are diffusing at the same rate. This is a scenario typically when the momentum diffusivity is smaller than the thermal diffusivity. Okay? So, this whatever I have drawn is nu the momentum diffusivity is much much smaller than that is the case which I have depicted in the board. Now, under this case if this is the scenario then it is also possible suppose I draw an extreme scenario that I say that the velocity boundary layer is even very much thinner. So, this is now my modified much much smaller, is it? it is not just smaller, but alpha or larger alpha is significantly larger than the or the thermal diffusivity is significantly larger than the momentum diffusivity. That is the scenario in that case the delta V will be now only this much that is the velocity boundary. What does that indicate? That indicates that the velocity here, what is the velocity here? What is the velocity within the thermal boundary layer? Everywhere the velocity is equal to infinity. Barring from this region, this small region, everywhere in the domain, the velocity, the temperature is not T infinity because it is about within boundary layer. Even within the thermal boundary layer, the velocity is going to be U infinity. So, therefore, under that condition, if this is this applies, in that case, what happens? is that we will not require any of these fluid flow equations because we can calculate the temperature distribution by assuming that the velocity remains constant within the whole domain. It is an approximation, it is not the reality, okay? it is an approximation, but this approximation allows us to make this equation very, very simple. Okay? So, under the condition that thermal diffusivity is much, much larger than the momentum diffusivity, one can approximate that the velocity in the flow domain of interest, the velocity for all practical purpose can be taken to be equal to u infinity. So, therefore, I will say this term is going to be u infinity okay? and then this term is not going to be existing because there is no v component, the flow is taking place along the streamwise direction and as I have indicated that along the x direction, the transport of heat by convection is much larger than the corresponding transport of heat by diffusion along the x direction. So, with respect to this term, when this term is existing, the contribution of this term is inconsequential. As a result of which, this equation can be now written as this is the equation. And how, what is this equation looks like? This equation is exactly looking like the semi-infinite geometry equation which I have told you earlier, okay? because 
Now what happens? This becomes one of the boundaries. The other boundary is at infinity. And this term, what was the semi-infinite geometry equation? The semi-infinite geometry equation, if you remember, I wrote it like this, rho cp. That is one dimensional heat conduction equation. That's the equation. First order derivative with respect to time. The first order derivative is there with respect to x. So what? You know that this x divided by u infinity can be interpreted as a time scale. Okay? Because this is centimeter, this is centimeter per second. So therefore, this essentially implies that the equation that I have obtained under the condition or the assumption this, I do not have to do the fluid flow calculation and I can find out that what is, uh, you know, uh, that if this is at different x, this will allow us to find out t as a function of x and y. So this graph I will be able to find out. These lines, red lines which I have drawn, I should be, these are going to be my error function solutions actually. These are going to be my error function solutions because I have shown this equation is essentially identical to the semi-infinite geometry equation which I have told you yesterday itself and therefore I can say that you know the solution of this equation will conform to the error function solution. Of course, the coefficients have to be interpreted. Okay? So, I would say that if we have this equation like this, then we can say k by rho c p or this is equal to our alpha and then here what we can see that we can say that we, we can define a time which is equal to x by u alpha and then this becomes equal to exactly the same thing. Okay? So, the time is to be interpreted at because x you know u infinity is constant, so time is directly related with x. So, you can predict the time, the solution from this which comes as a function of time, that time will correspond here to x by u, u, l, u alpha or u infinity. So, you should be able to corresponding to a time, you will find out a corresponding x and that corresponding x may be this, that corresponding x may be this, this corresponding x may be this and you can then find out that what is the house the error function is or the solution is changing as a function of So, just substitute the value of y and then you get find out. So, this is the solution of the dimensionless temperature and we should be able to establish it very easily. But this is a limiting condition solution only okay? because I have assumed this condition here. If this does not apply, in that case what happens? You have to solve all of this together. So, we have understood now. So, if you say that we require three conditions here as you can see and as I have indicated that I have dropped this second order term here. So, therefore, at x is equal to 0, what is the value of t? I will require at x is equal to 0. If you look at that figure, the value of t is going to be equal to t infinity for all values of y. Similarly, at y is equal to 0, I require, so along y I require two conditions at y is equal to 0 which is on the surface of the plate, I know that the temperature is going to be equal to T sub s which is a solid fixed temperature <coughs> surface temperature of the plate and then at y is equal to infinity or y greater than delta t, t is going to be again t infinity which is. So, three equations, three unknowns, error function is the solution, we will solve some problem on this and we will find out that what is the local, what are the local heat transfer uh, coefficients, uh, what are the local heat flux, how can you determine the plate average heat flux and plate average uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient that will be done through problems which I will design for you when we have or we conduct one of the uh, tutorial classes in the subsequent days. Now, <coughs> coming back to the heat transfer coefficient now which I was talking about. So, I said that look, so under certain case as I have indicated, simplification is possible. We can find out the heat flux, no problem because we can solve this. If you have to use all these equations, we require a numerical methods or an you know analytical methods are not going to be useful if you want to retain all the terms. So, it is going to be complex. On the other hand, if somebody gives us the heat transfer coefficient, then the life is simple. Okay? Heat transfer coefficient if someone gives us we may not establish the fluid flow temperature field because 
uh, that information is not there, but we will nonetheless be able to calculate at what rate heat is going from the solid to the fluid phase itself. The heat transfer coefficient h and this is the flux watt per meter square. So, therefore, h has a dimension of watt per meter square Kelvin that you must all the dimensions on units must be in your fingertips when you discuss you know uh, or uh, do problems etcetera that is going to be useful. This h I have already in the context of uh, a sphere losing heat to an ambient I have shown that you have come across one Nusselt dimensionless number Nusselt's number and I said that that Nusselt's number is nothing but this. Today we have learned one dimensionless number that is Prandtl number nu by alpha and in fluid flow we have also learned Reynolds number which is characteristic length characteristic velocity. We have also learned about Froud number which is so these are the five dimensionless numbers we have learned. So, this is characteristic velocity and characteristic length scale and we have also learned what is Euler's number and that Euler's number I have said is, is equal to delta p the pressure difference half rho characteristic velocity square. So far you have been exposed to all these dimensionless numbers. Okay. Now, this heat transfer coefficient was introduced through Nusselt's number which I have shown that Nusselt's number is equal to 2 if you remember in the context of heat transfer to a stagnant medium, but now we are not talking of stagnant medium, we are talking of moving medium. So, that movement can as, as you all know, you may be knowing from your previous exposure to the subject that this could be a free convective heat transfer. or this could be a force convective heat transfer. Free convection I have yesterday mentioned to you that if there is a temperature difference there is a density difference. So, there is a term convection current which sets up there may not be an external agitation. Suppose if in this room I put on the fan then there is an external agitation in the system. Similarly, the AC is on now, so the duct through the duct fluid is coming in, so there is a external agitation present in the system. But because of temperature difference, we have thermal free convection, because of so concentration difference, because that will determine whether fluid is denser or lighter, we can have uh, solutal convection and when we have both the phenomena I said yesterday, uh, is thermosolutal convection or free convection which may be due to both temperature and <coughs> concentration or solutes. On the other hand, if you have uh, external agitation, that agitation could be because of gas injection, because of a propeller stirring, uh, because of electromagnetic forces, various kinds of uh, sources are possible. So, if there is an external agitation in the system, we call it as force convective heat transfer scenario. So, the agitation here in the case of force convection is directly because of a power input by the propeller. Okay? On the other hand, there is no power input. In the case of free convection, it is occurring naturally, so this is also called natural convection. So, per se, there is nothing like in a free convection, there is nothing like a free stream velocity because free stream is stagnant. It is because of only a hot surface that the fluid may have different densities and it may generate some amount of convection current. Now, Therefore, conceptually they are different. In one case, we do not have a velocity imposed onto the system because of a direct power input. In the other case, we do have you know, a flow field which is induct induced because of certain amount of power which is fed into the system in the form of stirrer, electromagnetic stirring or gas injection and so on and so forth. Accordingly, we devise two kind of formulas which we call as that H can be obtained from correlations and those correlations therefore can be either a free convective heat transfer correlation or a force convective heat transfer correlation. Now, how we have 
one can determine the value of h. Uh, people like me, they have done, or the thermal engineers, they have done many experiments in their laboratory, many calculations by solving these equations, just like the way that yesterday I said, uh, or day before yesterday's lecture, that we do not have to do the computation of the infinite series all the time. We have the Heisler chart available to us, we can take those. So, Heisler did all the hard work for us, okay. He solved those equations, calculated the summation series, and then tabulated it so that we can, you know quickly get the temperature field. Here also, people have done lot of experiments, people have done uh, you know lot of experiments and calculations and with those calculations and uh, experiments, uh, people have devised simple expressions based on which the heat transfer co coefficient can be calculated. Fundamentally speaking, the heat transfer coefficient is a function of characteristic velocity, characteristic length, then viscosity, then density, specific heat and thermal conductivity of the fluid. And this is for forced convection scenario. Characteristic length, characteristic velocity, dynamic viscosity, density, specific heat, thermal conductivity of the fluid and this is the heat transfer coefficient. Today I am not going to show you the derivation this will be explained in greater detail when I talk about the mass transfer or force convection mass transfer. There I have some time, so I will be able to discuss the derivation of the correlation. This, if you all know the Buckingham Pi theorem, which I have mentioned during the discussion of fluid flow. So, we have, have three pi groups from this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 number of total variables. And if you look at the fundamental units, we have four fundamental units kg, which is there in, for example, Cp. We have distance and time and we have temperature also in Cp. So, there are mass unit, length unit, time unit as well as temperature unit. Four such fundamental units are there. Seven total number of variables, seven minus four and that tells us that three independent pi groups, pi means the dimensionless groups can be used to cast this functional form and this tells us that the functional form will come something like or Nusselt's is equal to A into Reynolds number raised to the power m into Fandral's number raised to the power m. This derivation that how one obtains a similar convective mass transfer correlation, force convective mass transfer correlation will be demonstrated later in the class, but for the time being let us accept the three Buckingham Pi theorem tells three dimensionless groups will emerge from this dimension from the dimensional analysis and therefore, I should be able to find out you know that what are this and this from the dimensional analysis comes out that this could be the, the three dimensionless groups which I have introduced here. In the context of forced convection, now free convection sorry, one can show that the velocity is actually because there is, as I said, that in the context of force free convection, there is per se no velocity or per se no externally imposed velocity field. The velocity field generates because of the natural tendency into the system. And this is <coughs> if you check the dimension of this, if this is meters per second, this will exactly come out to be meters per second. So, the free convection problem, so this is the, this is the driving force delta t because of which the density is different. So, one can express convert this delta t also in terms of delta rho because rho and t are related with each other. Now, if this is this, so therefore, this turns out that from the free convection, this velocity, the Reynolds number here, if you use this number, then we have Reynolds number is what? The Reynolds number, let me write down it here so that one can see. Okay. The Reynolds number basically that you have defined is the characteristic length, velocity into viscosity and density. But that in a free convection problem, this velocity is not known to us. You know? Typically, we, we use far field velocity to compute it. In this case, you have to calculate, for example, Reynolds number. 
I will calculate the Reynolds number based on this U infinity because that is known to me. And that's why it is it's a characteristic velocity of the system. I do not know the velocity here, so I cannot apply what is the velocity in a Reynolds number. There's a local Reynolds number, of course, you know, if you find out, but that is not of interest. Most of the time, when you have deal with an overall scenario, we compute parameters which are known to us, and therefore, in this particular case, we will compute a Reynolds number based on a known velocity field, which is the free stream velocity. In the free convection, as I have indicated, there is no imposed velocity field, and that velocity has a dimension of this. So, if you substitute this, then what happens is this becomes comes out to be rho square g beta L cube into delta t and this becomes equal to mu square. So, instead of u, I have substituted this parameter. So, L square has become L cube and rho has become rho square, but this number in free convection will not call it as Reynolds number this number is going to be called as the Grashof's number. So, we have learned another dimensionless number, Grashof's number is equal to this. So, therefore, the force convection correlation will give us that Nusselt's number is a function of Grashof's number and Grashof's number. So, this is free convection. So, as I said, A, M and N. So, in this case, we will have B, M1 and N1. These par parameters are constants here and these are determined either by performing, solving the differential equations or by conducting trials for a given geometry. So, the correlations are given. The value of A, M and N depend on the nature of the flow, whether it is a laminar flow, whether it is a turbulent flow, whether it is a flow over a flat plate whether it is a flow around the cylinder, whether it is a vertical cylinder or it is a horizontal cylinder, all these things will change A, M and N. So, therefore, we will have correlations specific to a geometry, specific to a flow condition, specific to you know the type of flow whether it is laminar or turbulent. So, you have to the task is you will have 1001 correlations available to you, but you will have to identify that what is the correlation which is applicable to your particular condition. Okay? So, therefore, I will now give you an example. For example, this case what I have explained in the whole lecture today. So, the flat plate correlation forced convection over a flat plate, forced convection over a flat plate. So, force convection we will expect a functional relationship between Nusselt's Reynolds and Plundell, and that. So, it is a plate average correlation, and this is equal to Reynolds number defined with length as the characteristic length, and the definition of Reynolds number, as I said, will be the velocity scale will be the free stream velocity, which is indicated it is half into Plundell number raised to the power 1 by 3. Flow around the sphere. Again, this is valid for laminar flow as I have indicated, flow around the sphere. We have seen that Nusselt's number, diameter based Nusselt's number is equal to 2 when there was no flow, and now we have an additional component coming from the flow, and here we see that it is the diameter of Reynolds number. And again, here, if the flow is taking place like fluid flow is approaching like this, you know. So, it is u infinity, it is that u infinity which is going to be used in the express definition of Reynolds number, not the velocity here, not the velocity here. It is the first stream velocity that is important for us, and this is Reynolds number raised to the power half into Prandtl number raised to the power 1 by 3. This correlation has a very specific name which you call as a Range Marshall correlation. Similarly, these are, this is also forced convection, forced convection. If I write one such correlation for free convection, free convection, heat transfer correlation, 
from a vertical plate I write P for plate and their free convection now I will not have the Reynolds number but I will rather have the Tashoff's number so it is again vertical plate length base so this is going to be 0.6 into Grashoff's number raised to the power I think 1 by 4 into Reynolds number uh, sorry Randall number raised to the power 1 by 3. I think it is not 0 0.6 it is 0 0.5 I think but you can check this these are all listed in the standard textbooks okay they are available in nets anywhere you just have to type force convection co correlation free convection correlation from a vertical plate for horizontal plate this may not be applicable okay so therefore each correlation is specific to a certain geometry and here you can see the constant a or b is 0 0.5 and the exponents m and n which i have indicated here you know given as half 0.1 by 3 it does not mean that they are going to be always like this so many of these correlations are either theoretically derived by solving the governing equations or they will be derived or obtained by conducting experiments under certain conditions so i have just one more topic to cover i want to introduce uh, one important uh, terminology which we call as uh, uh, fully developed heat transfer that we'll do it in the next class and then I will move on to uh, discuss the radiative heat transfer I think that should be enough uh, for the time being okay so I'll catch you tomorrow